I'm eight months pregnant and have been thinking about where to have my baby, which has led me to discover that over 97% of modern women actually give birth in hospital. This is pretty surprising given that the majority of my parents' generation were actually born in the home. I get chatting to some women and find out what giving birth was like back then. I think I was just a straightforward case. And, uh, you know, I just had a natural birth. What year? 1944. So and, of course, uh, just previous to that, we'd had an air raid. And Jerry had dropped a bomb. You could have given birth in an air raid shelter. Yeah, yeah. My granny actually gave birth under a billiards table. Yeah. And what about the pain? Now there's a big thing about pain control. No. You no. just got on with it. And no, that, I never no. had anything either. Not I, a single pain no, no, nothing at all. I'd made up my mind. Yeah, me too. That, that I, I would be better at mother. home. Now, what if I told you that nowadays more than 97% of births take place in hospital? It's not right. You're better off at home. These women's stories paint a picture of a totally different world. But after the war, things were about to change radically. The advent of the NHS in 1948 meant that all women who wanted to have a birth in hospital felt that they should be able to do that. In 1970, the Peel Report was published, and this concluded that it was safer for all women to have their babies in hospital and that birth at home was not safe. Now, this was entirely uh, erroneous. It was false. This meant that almost 99% of all births were in hospital. It's with this on my mind that I go to my next antenatal appointment. Hi, Nicola. Hello. How are you? Fine, thanks. I'm fine. I've remembered my notes for once. Baby moving well? Yeah, quite well, at night especially. Good. I would like to go for the home birth. We can offer you the choice of place of birth up until the point when you're in early labour. So we can come to your home, assess you, and again, you decide at that point. I live in a postcode where the choice of a home birth has been offered. Why is King's... So ahead of the game in this? It's about funding. So recently, lots more community midwives have been employed to um, increase our service, and increase the amount of women we can reach and offer this service to. What of the safety aspect? Because that's what struck me. When I've told friends and family, oh, I'm going to have a home birth, they've gone, oh, you're brave. As long as you're well and your baby's well, there's no reason why we shouldn't stay at home. And at any point, there's any contraindication to that, we would advise you that we would transfer into the hospital. So there's actually, at the moment, no reason why I shouldn't give birth at home? No. You're healthy at the moment, baby's growing well. No reason at all. Great. How exciting. <laughs> Not sure my husband would say the same thing, but there we go. <laughs> While I'm convinced I've made the right choice, I do wonder why other women have such different attitudes to having a baby at home. So unless you've booked a home birth whereby you've got the professional support with you... In another part of London, the women I meet in an antenatal class have had a very different experience. If you're wanting a natural birth, why didn't you go for a home birth? I wasn't very well informed about my options with a home birth, so I would have definitely considered it if I had been educated early on in, the, in my pregnancy as to what that would entail and what my options were. Some of the information I was given, I was told I actually cannot, you can't have a home birth if you haven't booked it within the first sort of initial period. It makes me realise what a postcode lottery it is when it comes to being offered real choice of maternity care. In April last year, the government published Maternity Matters, in which they promised that by the end of 2009, women would have more control over their maternity care, including the option of where they gave birth. This policy reflects the current woman-centred approach to maternity care, which is supported by the Royal College of Midwives. At present, however, the type of service women are offered varies, depending on what facilities are available locally. Martin Horwood put the subject of choice on the political agenda. The most important thing is that people have a choice, that women have a choice about how and where they want to give birth. But I don't think they're going to be able to deliver that now. Why not? Well, one of the problems is the, the lack of trained midwives and the resources that are being made available to local NHS trusts to actually provide the maternity services that people want. As I'm now four weeks away from my due date, Nicola Hi. arrives for my routine Hello. home visit with a birth Hi. pack. Thanks for coming. Let's so you can have a, a quick look, so you've got your in case sheets. Rubber gloves, there's an awful lot of clearing up, which we will do and leave your house just as we found it. 
the drugs we bring with us on the day, the Entenox, the gas and air, which you can use for pain relief, we also bring on the day. So uh, that is available as, a, as an option it, at home? It is. We bring a couple of cylinders and we can also send someone back for more cylinders if you cranking your way through it. I heard that you're less likely in the end to have these more medicalised uh, forms of painkiller, the epidural, or even indeed end up with a caesarean. Is that true? Women who um, have babies at home are less likely to have interventions and have caesarean section. To give myself confidence, I meet Penny, who had her baby at home just 10 weeks ago. Now I heard that she was born at home, is that right? Yes, she was, yeah. It was, we really enjoyed it, it was great. How did it progress? Um, well, it progressed a lot quicker than um, than we thought. One of the reasons for that was um, because I was so relaxed, and then by the time I got the urge to push, um, you know, the mid midwife was came within half an hour, and half an hour later, she came up. So she was feeding five minutes after she was born. Really? So. You got your textbook <laughs> case, <aren't> I know. You? <laughs> She's so well behaved, very calm. <laughs> Bang on my due date, and my contractions have started. Oh, it's a long old process, this labour. It's been two days now, and the midwives have come and gone, and there's been lots of talking to them on the phones, and hopefully next time they come, there'll be a result. A few hours later, I have to put another call into the midwives. In half an hour, they arrive. It turns out things are finally progressing well. And I want a tiny little push, Tessa, not a big hard one, just a tiny one. That's it, blow, blow, she's out, the head's out, OK? <laughs> Very well done, it was brilliant, Tessa, textbook birth. And it, this is now... Three hours post-birth, yeah. and we're sitting down to dinner. Yeah, we are. I'm only having a time, but obviously it's <laughs> With Mara safe and healthy, there's one visit I'm really looking forward to making. Look what I've got. Guess where she was born? I don't know. At home. And guess what else? I didn't have any pain relief. No, no, none. none. Good girl. Always Good girl. marvellous. I think you're very clever to be able to do it because they're so keen on pushing you into hospital nowadays. So do you know what it means? Little Miss Mara Violet and I would have survived the war. Absolutely. Wouldn't we? Yeah, yeah. you yeah. would. So 60 years on, I've managed to give birth in the same way as my granny, Hilda, Rini and Violet. But the difference is, I had the backup of a really modern NHS. And I've got to say, I've been so impressed with the service I've received. But of course, the bigger question is, will the government really be able to offer the option of a home birth to every pregnant woman by the end of next year?